make sure you have spoken with your healthcare provider before using an assistive device. It is recommended that you are taught these stepping patterns by your healthcare provider and use this video as a supplement. Caution should be used when performing these stepping patterns as adequate strength and balance is required. Hi, this is Fan Yang. This is Kim Van Kim. And this is Kristen Garlow. We are student physical therapists from the University of Michigan. We have collaborated with Beaumont Hospital to produce this instructional video about the proper use of assistive devices. The walker's hand pieces should be at the level of your wrists, with your arms hanging by your sides. Position yourself so the rear legs of the walker are in line with the mid portion of your shoes. Place your hands on the hand pieces. Your elbows should be slightly bent. Scoot your hips forward to the edge of the seat. If you are unable to put full body weight on both legs, place your stronger leg slightly behind the injured leg. Place your hands on the armrests in front of your hips. To stand, lean forward while pushing down on your arms and the strongest leg. Place one hand onto the hand grip while partially standing. Place the other hand on the hand grip. The walker advances at the same time as the injured leg, then the strong leg steps through the walker. Walker and injured leg, strong leg. Walker and injured leg, strong leg. To turn, use the same stepping pattern with a quarter turn for each step. The injured leg steps with the advancement of the walker. The strong leg advances while the person's body weight is distributed between the walker and the injured leg. Walker and injured leg, strong leg. The injured leg steps with the advancement of the walker. The strong leg advances while the person's body weight is distributed between the walker and injured leg. To turn, use the same stepping pattern with a quarter turn for each step. The stronger leg steps with the advancement of the walker. Then the stronger leg advances. Walker and weak leg, strong leg. Walker and weak leg, strong leg. To turn, use the same stepping pattern with a quarter turn for each step. The walker should continually be moving as the person is walking. To turn, use the same stepping pattern with a quarter turn for each step. Turn the walker sideways with the front two legs on the stairs. Place your hand on the walker handle closest to the stairs. Put your other hand on the stair railing. Hop to the first step with your strong leg while pushing through your arms. Make sure your injured leg is up and behind you. Stop and gain your balance before progressing to the next step. Repeat by placing the walker on the next step and hopping up with your strong leg. Turn the walker sideways so the front of the walker is beside your leg. Place the front two legs of the walker on the first step. Place your hand on the walker handle farthest from the step. Put your other hand on the stair railing. Hop down to the first step 
with your strong leg while keeping your injured leg up and behind you. Stop and gain balance before progressing to the next step. Repeat by going down to the next step with the walker and then hopping down with the strong leg. Turn the walker sideways with the front two legs of the walker on the first step so the front of the walker is beside your leg. Place your hand on the walker handle closest to the stairs. Put your other hand on the stair railing. Place your strong leg on the first step while distributing your body weight between your arms and your injured leg. Lift your injured leg on the first step. Stop and gain balance before progressing to the next step. Repeat by placing the walker on the next step, going up with your strong leg first, then your injured leg. Sometimes it helps to remember the phrase, up with the good. Turn the walker sideways, placing the front two legs of the walker on the first step. Place your hand on the walker handle farthest from the stairs. Put your other hand on the stair railing. Place your injured leg on the first step while distributing some of your body weight through your arms. Lower your strong leg down to the same step. Stop and gain balance before progressing to the next step. Repeat by going down to the next step with the walker, the injured leg, then the strong leg. Sometimes it helps to remember the phrase, down with the bad. Turn the walker sideways with the front two legs of the walker on the first step. Place your hand on the walker handle closest to the stairs. Put your other hand on the stair railing. Place your strong leg on the first step. Lift your injured leg on the first step. Stop and gain balance before progressing to the next step. Repeat going up on each step with your strong leg first, then your injured leg. Sometimes it helps to remember the phrase, up with the good. Turn the walker sideways with the front two legs of the walker on the first step. Place your hand on the walker handle farthest from the stairs. Put your other hand on the stair railing. Place your injured leg on the first step. Lower your strong leg down to the same step. Stop and gain balance before progressing to the next step. Repeat by going down to the next step with the walker the injured leg, then the strong leg. Walk to the edge of the curb facing away from it with your walker in front of you. Keeping your injured leg up and bent, hop up to the curb backwards while pushing through your arms. Walk to the edge of the curb. Place the walker on the ground below. Hop down on your strong leg while pushing through your arms. Walk to the edge of the curb. Place the walker up on the curb. Push down on the walker with your arms while stepping up with the strong leg. Step up with the injured leg. Walk to the edge of the curb. Place the walker on the ground below. Step down with your injured leg while distributing your weight between your arms and your injured leg. Step down with your strong leg. Walk to the edge of the curb. Place the walker up on the curb. Push down on the walker with your arms while stepping up with the strong leg. Step up with the injured leg. Walk to the edge of the curb. Place the walker on the ground below. 
Step down with your injured leg. Step down with your strong leg. Unscrew the cane at the bottom. Move the adjustable bar up or down according to your height. The top of the cane should be at wrist level when standing straight with arms relaxed at your sides. Your elbow should be slightly bent. Stand with tall posture. Look ahead and not down at your feet. The cane should help you with balance and with weight bearing. Move to the front of the chair. Lean forward and look ahead. Push yourself up by using the arms of the chair or the chair seat while holding the cane. Use the cane on your stronger side or on the opposite side from the weaker or painful leg. First, move the cane forward. Then step forward with your weaker leg, followed by your stronger leg. Continue with this pattern. Hold the cane close to your body so you can push straight down on it. Remember to stand with tall posture and look ahead. Again, Put the cane on your stronger side. Place one hand on the handrail and the other holding the cane. Step up with the stronger leg first. Move weaker leg up with the cane to the same step. Remember, up with the good and down with the bad to help you lead with the correct leg. With your cane on your stronger side, place one hand on the handrail and the other hand holding the cane. This time, step down with the weaker leg first while moving the cane down to the same step. Then, move the stronger leg down to the same step. Make sure the cane is not anywhere close to the edge of the step. Stand near the edge of the curb and get your balance. Step up with your stronger leg first. Then bring your other leg and the cane up. Get your balance again before you start walking. Stand near the edge of the curb and get your balance. This time, step down with the weaker leg first while moving the cane down to the same step. Then. Move the stronger leg down to the same step. Try this first with another person nearby to study you if needed. In order to find the correct fit, you may have to adjust the height of the crutches and the handles. To adjust the height, you can flip your crutch upside down. 
Near the bottom of the crutch is an adjustable slide that allows you to move the crutch to match your height. Some crutches are not labeled using height measurements. In order to know whether your crutch length is correct, you should stand with the crutches under your arms with the crutches and your arms at your side. You should be able to fit two to three finger widths between your underarm and the top of the crutch. After you have adjusted the height, you can adjust the handle to match the length of your arm. With the crutches again under your arms and at your side, the handle should fall at the level of your wrist. After adjusting the height of the crutches and handles, the crutches are fit correctly if there is a gap between your underarm and the crutch and your elbows are slightly bent while holding the crutches at the handles. In order to move safely into standing from a chair, bed, or other surface, you will first want to put your affected extremity in front of the other. The crutches should then be placed onto the unaffected side. While moving to standing, you will want to put weight through your unaffected leg and through the hand grips of the crutches and the surface of your seat. Once standing, bring one crutch to the other side of your body so you can begin walking. To begin walking, you move the crutches forward and then step with your unaffected limb. Move the crutches forward and step. Once you get the hang of it, you can take longer steps. In the meantime, try to move the crutches only a few inches in front of your body so not to lose balance. If your physician has allowed you to bear weight on your injured leg, you will move the crutches forward and the affected extremity together and then step with your unaffected limb. Move crutches with the injured leg, then step. Again, take smaller steps until you feel comfortable with using the crutches. If you are ready to return to sitting, you will want to back up to the chair until the back of your legs hit the front of the chair. Next, you will bring the crutch around to the side of the body that is injured. While transitioning to sitting, kick the affected extremity out in front and move slowly into sitting. You may have to ascend stairs while using crutches. In order to do this safely, you will want to move as close to the staircase as you can. If you are using a railing, move both crutches to the side opposite the railing and place your hands on the handles. Reach for the railing with your free hand. Next, put weight through both hands, step up with your unaffected limb, and then bring the crutches up. Keep the affected leg bent and away from contact with the steps. Continue with this pattern, weight through the hands, up with the good leg, and bring the crutches up. Once at the top of the steps, bring one crutch to the other side and resume walking. To descend stairs using a railing, similarly move the crutches to the side of the body opposite the railing and hands on the handles. This time, you will move the crutches first, move your injured leg forward next, followed by your unaffected extremity. Place the crutches an inch or so from the end of the step to allow enough room to step, but not too close to lose balance. Continue this movement down the steps, crutches first, and followed by the uninjured leg. Once at the bottom, you can move one crutch to the other side of the body and resume walking. If you are using a railing, move both crutches to the side of the body opposite the railing and reach for the railing with your free hand. Next, put weight through both hands, step up with your good leg, and then bring your crutches up with your injured leg. Continue using this pattern, up with the good leg, weight through the hands, and finally bring the crutches and the injured leg up. Once at the top of the steps, bring one crutch to the other side and resume walking.
Move the crutches to the side of the body opposite the railing and grab the crutches at the handles. You will move the crutches first, move your injured leg forward next, followed by your unaffected extremity. Again, place the crutches an inch or so from the end of the step to allow enough room to step, but not too close to lose balance. Continue this movement down the steps, crutches first, and followed by the uninjured leg. Once at the bottom, you can move one crutch to the other side of the body and resume walking. To ascend a curb while non-weight bearing, you will want to move as close to the curb as possible. Once ready to ascend, lean forward, step up with your unaffected limb, and bring your crutches up next, keeping your injured leg bent and away from contact with the curb. To descend, move close to the curb. Bring the crutches down to the ground below first, lean forward, shifting your body weight in front of you slightly, and step down with your unaffected leg. Make sure your injured limb is away from contact with the curb. First step up the curb with your healthy leg and then bring the crutches and your injured leg up at the same time. While descending, move close to the edge of the curb, bring crutches down first, lean forward and bring your injured leg down followed by your healthy leg. To use the knee scooter, place the knee of the injured leg on the cushion. Next, place one hand on the handlebar with a finger on the bicycle type handbrake. To move forward, simply release the brake and use your good foot to move forward. To turn, shift your weight to your good foot just like you do when you are walking. Lift the front of the knee scooter with one finger and point it in the direction you want to go. Watch your speed. Although many are equipped with handbrakes, these will not stop you as fast as you might need. Most of the braking will be done like Fred Flintstone with your good foot. If you have to go up or down small curbs, lean back as you slowly go down. Let the front wheels slowly go down the curb or step, apply the brakes to help hold you in place, step down with the good foot, and slowly roll forward to bring the back wheels down. To go up a small curb, lean forward over the knee scooter, slowly lift the front wheel up the curb, move the knee scooter forward, then apply the brakes so that it doesn't roll back to you. Step up, then roll the knee walker forward up and over the curb. In order to go down a slight incline, lean back to control your forward speed, apply the brakes, and take quick, short steps with your good foot in order to brace yourself from racing forward too quickly. This will help to control your speed and avoid accidents. To go up a slight incline, lean towards the front wheels for balance, push with your good foot, and apply the brakes to avoid rolling backward when you are lifting up your good foot to push forward again. This is done with short, quick steps also, in order to keep moving forward and not rolling back. To lock the scooter, press down on both brakes until you hear and feel a click. Press up on the brakes to unlock. To transport the knee scooter, simply untwist the screw connecting the base of the scooter to the handlebar and fold the handlebar forward. Once transported and ready to use again, simply lift the handlebar of the knee scooter while pulling on a lever located on the left hand side of the base of the handlebar. To lock the handlebar, release the lever and tighten the screw. Once the screw is tight, press down on a handle on the right hand side of the base of the handlebars.